going to need to make a shelter, hunt for something to eat and make a fire to stay warm. And what I'm going to go over is the danger of staying too comfortable in your life. Explore why comfort makes you weak and how a few simple changes can make you healthier, happier and more confident. Because I think we've fallen into the trap of complacency and become too comfortable with our lives. And that comfort is killing our growth, not just physically, but mentally, and also personally and professionally. I finished work this morning and I've come out to spend the night with nothing except what I've got here. So I've got a rifle, a saw, pocket knife, an ax, and some fire lighting kit, a flint and steel. I've got the clothes that I'm wearing and I've got a Gore-Tex jacket, and that is it. And the first thing I need to do is go and find somewhere to sleep for the night. Thing is, this isn't gonna be a comfortable night, but that's the point. We're living now progressively sheltered, sterile, temperature controlled, overfed and under challenged lives. And it's really limiting the degree to which we experience life, but it doesn't have to be that way. You need to realize that craving comfort is built into our DNA. We evolved to seek it out. We naturally default to shelter, warmth, extra food and minimal effort. And that drive through human history, that's been really beneficial because it's pushed us to survive. Our comfort drive led us to find food, to build shelter, to flee from predators, to do anything that would basically help us survive. And in an uncomfortable world, that's really helpful. Seeking bits of comfort helped us stay alive. Our problem today is that our environment has changed, but our wiring hasn't. And that wiring in your DNA, it's not designed to be constantly comfortable. It requires hardship to thrive and for you to feel and be at your best. You can think about it like this. The modern comforts that most influence our days, cars, computers, TV, smartphones, they've been around for about 100 years. Compared to the hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, it's nothing more than a blink of an eye. And evidence is now showing that people are at their best, physically harder, mentally tougher, and spiritually sounder after experiencing the same discomforts our early ancestors were exposed to. In fact, certain discomforts protect us from physical and psychological problems like depression and anxiety, and even more fundamental issues like feeling a lack of meaning and purpose. That doesn't mean you need to go back to living in caves, but what it does mean is that finding ways to balance the advantages of the modern world with that natural edge built into your DNA it gives you the best of both worlds. And that is because stepping away from comfort and into discomfort is powerful. Because here's the thing, if you wanna to be tougher mentally and physically, you have to do hard things. It's a simple equation, but people want to skip the doing the hard things part and just arrive at a place where they feel more confident, more in control, more resilient. But it's not gonna happen. Doing something you find hard is a crucial part of your personal growth and development. It's when you face and overcome difficult situations, that is when you forge that toughness. Constant comfort is the trap that keeps you from reaching your true potential. But you can overcome that with a few small adjustments. And something I like to do semi-regularly is just to get out and do something hard in nature because for me, nature is a great leveler. It brings you back to your more raw self because it's not shaped and influenced by humans. It follows its own laws and processes and it can be beautiful and peaceful, but it can also be harsh and unforgiving. And without exception, I always feel better for time spent outdoors. I know that hunting is a subject that evokes strong opinions and it's not something I'm gonna dig into in this video, but for me, it's a powerful way to connect and engage with nature in a challenging way. So. We're gonna head off now and see what we can find. It does remind me, and I don't know why I've just thought of this, in commando training, they do a survival X night. I remember we were sat around and lads were whittling spoons and Al had just bought a brand new, incredibly sharp Spyderco knife and he was whittling the spoon and he slipped off and stabbed it pretty far into his thigh. Just heard him go, shit, just stabbed myself. And then he pulled the knife out, blood just went everywhere. He nearly passed out. So I ran up to the training team. Excuse me, Corporal, what is it, Jeffries? Gooding's just stabbed himself in the leg, Corporal. For fuck's sake, right, come and show me. <laughs> that was him off the exercise. But the thing about that, thing about commando training, you know, it's 32 weeks and you can look at it like 32 steps of harder and harder challenges, but it's progressive. And that's really important to remember, you get tougher gradually. You don't do it in one go. It's a process and it's an ongoing process through your whole life. There is nothing magical or secret about becoming a soldier. You obviously need to want to do it, but from there, it's just a skill. It's a building process like anything else. So that was a completely unsuccessful hunt. I mean, didn't really give ourselves enough time um, but that's fine, it's 
just the nature of it. Sometimes you get something and sometimes you don't. And gonna miss two meals. That is part of it as well. We're, we're so used to having feeding times that people start to freak out when they miss one or two meals. Completely capable, built evolutionary to go for periods without food. It's not a big problem unless mentally you create a problem out of it. Obviously it's not something you're gonna aim for all the time. And again, as we've talked about, having regular access to food is really, really powerful for where we are now in modern society. But equally, your body is capable of not having that. Your body is capable of so much more than we give it credit for. So, got no food, but we're gonna go make a fire anyway and at least get some warmth before turning in, before it gets dark. The thing is, if you look at everyday life, it's very easy to be comfortable, quite literally, every single moment. Waking up in a soft bed in a temperature controlled home, driving to work in a car with heating and air con, sitting in a chair, staring at a screen all day, killing any boredom with a smartphone. And then after work, eating no effort, high calorie foods on an overstuffed sofa to binge on Netflix. But comfort doesn't equal happiness. The data shows that we are living longer than ever, but most of us are living with a greater proportion of our years in ill health, propped up by medications and machines. Lifespan might be up, but health spans down. We've never been more overweight, out of shape, stressed, anxious, and unhappy. And from what I can see, the more you try and avoid hardship and discomfort, the more you're gonna pay the price for it. You might think it's making life easier, and maybe it does in the short term, but you're going to pay a price for it in the long term. If you don't seek out ways to feel discomfort, you are going to stagnate and even regress because when you become too comfortable, you lose that drive to push yourself. The trouble is, it's very easy to slip into that comfort cycle of the same routines day in and day out, but you can start to make changes immediately with small steps, and the first one is to embrace discomfort by reframing the way you think about it. We avoid it because it doesn't feel good, but instead of viewing it as a negative experience, see it as an opportunity to challenge and develop your limits. See these experiences as an opportunity to grow rather than as something to fear. Whether it's physical discomfort during exercise or emotional discomfort of a difficult conversation, all of these experiences are gonna make you stronger. Even something as simple as deciding to go for a walk, how often do you hear people say, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's too wet? When just a few hundred years ago, your ancestors were crossing scorching deserts, climbing freezing mountains and sailing wild oceans without even a whisper of modern technology. You have that power inside you. You just need to wake it up by choosing to because when you do, it is gonna remind you that you are more capable than you think. And that is how you build confidence and resilience. The other benefit of doing things like this now and again is that you're gonna learn a hell of a lot about yourself through the experience. You'll learn more about your strengths and weaknesses through one bout of hardship than years spent in perpetual comfort. There is a reason they call this stuff character building because you can forge new strengths and iron out weaknesses. It's easy to stick with what you know rather than take on something new and potentially difficult, but it really is gonna limit your opportunities for growth and prevent you from developing skills necessary for success. Stepping outside of that zone of comfort will allow you to explore different paths, which is going to develop your potential far faster than if you stay within the confines of what feels familiar and safe. So obviously that was not a comfortable night, but it is what it is, that was the point of it. I think for anyone, you know, a way to recognize when you're too comfortable, you can start by assessing how much you're actually challenging yourself, whether that's mentally or physically. And when you do start feeling stuck in a rut and uninspired, then it's time to change things. So you can snap out of that autopilot mode and start to focus on improving yourself. And to begin with, just look for practical steps for embracing discomfort. You know, sign up for something new, step up at work, do a hard workout, do any workout. 
talk to a stranger or ask someone out, there are a thousand ways to step into a discomfort zone and start increasing confidence in your ability to handle difficult situations. And remember to just stay open-minded about the possibilities beyond your current circumstances where you are right now, because that doesn't matter, you can change it. And every step that you take into discomfort, into a discomfort zone, you're going to develop mental toughness, which ultimately increases performance across the whole of your life whether that's professionally or personally, you're going to improve because of it. You know, the literature is clear. Compared to people who have been sheltered their entire lives, the people who have faced adversity always report better psychological well-being. They have higher life satisfaction and fewer psychological and physical symptoms. By facing some challenge, you are going to develop an internal capacity that leaves you more robust and more resilient. This was an uncomfortable experience in many ways, but it still feels good to be doing something outside of my normal routine. So you just tune out of those hectic frequencies of modern life. And it feels good to be in that discomfort zone, even if it does mean you get a crap sleep or you miss food, because it hones that mental and physical edge. It's no different from fitness. If I get fit by running and then I go cycling, I'm not gonna be as good at cycling, but I'll still have increased that cardiovascular endurance. And it's the same with internal, mental and physical robustness. The more you step into your discomfort zone and hone that edge, it's gonna cross over to the rest of your life. And that is how you become more resilient and more robust.